We have to move along now, so I will ask, uh, well, introduce our next speaker, who is uh, Chalmar Hatu. Chalmar is, um, has, an, has a Master of Science in Physics and is working on a PhD in Physical Oceanography. And he's presently employed by the Faroese uh, Fisheries Laboratory and by the Nansen Environmental and Remote Sensing Center, a Bjerkne Center for Climate Research in Norway. And he's going to be speaking on uh, the marine climate and blue whiting in the northeastern Atlantic. Thank you, Jelma. Thank you, Kate. Yeah, I'm Chomar Hatun, and I'm going to talk about the blue whiting, which is uh, Svartshafter, as you know, in Faris, the small fish here. And I want to first acknowledge my co-authors or collaborators, uh, Jan Arke Jakobsen, uh, Mark Payne, and Anne Brissande. Uh, this um, blue whiting is a small fish living in a huge stock and spreading over a vast area, all the way up to Svalbard in north and Barents Sea in east and to Greenland in the west. This species is spawning uh, west of the British Isles, as shown with the red here, and they migrate past the Faroe Islands, up in, primarily into the Norwegian Sea to feed in summertime, and then south again to spawn again. So just an outline overview of uh, what I'm going to say. I'm going to focus on some big changes that we saw in ocean circulation and also in this uh, stock dynamics after 96. Then uh, describe this um, thing called the subpolar gyre in, in the North Atlantic Ocean. Um, make the question, uh, are we going back to the 60s with uh, this blue whiting stock because the climate seems to have gone to a state like it was in the 60s. Um, and just see how this uh, might change migration pattern past the Faroe Islands. And then I've changed the end just to give a vision of future potential between science and the fishery industry. So just some new brainstorming thoughts. What you see here is um, what you call a gyre index. It represents the ocean circulation in the North Atlantic. I'll come back to this. Uh, in black you see blue whiting landings total in millions of tons. So this is a huge stock, and what you really see is that there was a big shift, both in ocean circulation and also in this, in this um, blue whiting stock after 96. It was so big that um, after this, four out of every five kilos landed in the Faroe Islands have been blue whiting. It's very large, and also that this fishery during this period here was the largest fishery in the Atlantic Ocean. So this uh, seemingly uh, link between uh, ocean climate and this fish stock, to understand that link is crucial. Can it go back, for example, which it seems to do these days. Uh, now the subpolar gyre thing, uh, it's a big body of uh, cold and fresh water in the North Atlantic, uh, circulating uh, anti-clockwise. South of it, uh, we have the subtropical gyre, which has warmer and more saline uh, water. What we recently found out in a paper in Science is that the characteristics in this region where they spawn, that is temperature and salinities and so on, is influenced by how much contribution is come from this subtropical gyre and how much is from the subpolar gyre. Uh, so years when you have much of this, conditions are warm and saline, and vice versa, if you have much from this, it will be colder and, and fresher, which is crucial for the marine climate. In more detail, I can just kill the myth right away that um, the Gulf Stream does not reach the Faroe Islands. Uh, the North, its offspring, the North Atlantic Current, does not reach the Faroe Islands either. It's actually competing with warmer, more saline water in the east here. During years when you have a strong subpolar gyre, it actually pushes a North Atlantic Current into the rock trough. It drags with it um, subarctic water masses into this region that are cold and fresh, and thus uh, conditions are cold and fresh. And vice versa, when this subpolar gyre circulation is weak, it flips back on itself and it draws more subtropical water west of Rockall, and that draws subtropical waters in the region, and the condition is warm and saline. And remember this process, this is a fundamental, um, uh, not only for blue whiting, it's the basis of the rest of the talk, it's also very important for the entire ecosystem in this region, plankton and many fish species. And of course, this has various influence directly on Iceland and Ferris. Then we came up with this gyre index. It describes how 
large the influence is of the subpolar gyre into this region. It's shown here, a time series so-called. Uh, when it's up, it's a weak gyre and it's warm. When it's down, it's a strong gyre, it's colder. And we see that in the 60s, we had uh, a weak gyre, it was warm in this region. In the early 90s, when we had recession in the pharaohs, for example, um, it was much stronger and colder conditions. But then, just after 95, there was this huge flip in the system. And now, after 95, we have again had a weak gyre, warm and sideline conditions, pretty much like in the 60s. That's why I pose the question, are we going back to the 60s? Um, fishery started in, in the late 70s, so we don't have fisheries data from that period. So we have to go to older data of larva, which is shown here for the 60s. Black large dots show much larva, open uh, circles, uh, less than lar larva and pluses no larva. And we see that in the warm 60s, there was much larva, abundant, it was warm, and they stood f far to the north. But then it cooled down during the late 60s and early 70s, and what you see here is uh, less larva during these cold conditions, and it shifted south. And to understand that, we need to, to understand how the spawning dynamics of blue whiting is related to ocean climate. So blue whiting is especially sensitive to temperature and salinity while it's spawning, very sensitive. So if you have a fish in warm and saline water, if it enters colder water, it doesn't like that. So it wants to swim either south or east until it finds water with the right characteristics and it'll spawn. Um, whether it is temperature itself, or actually maybe it, the salinity, or maybe it knows what kind of plankton is in there, which is different from here, and maybe this is more beneficial to the larva, we don't know that. So maybe temperature and uh, or salinity are a proxy of plankton or chemistry or something else. It's not just temperature and fish, as many people. It's easy to look at temperature, but it represents type of water and thereby types of plankton and chemistry and everything. Um, so let's look uh, closer at temperature. We now saw that in the late, uh, uh, now, recently, it was similar to the 70s. And here we see uh, the temperature on 200 meters. Uh, reddish colors is warm. And this is before 95. And then after 95, it's much redder, as you see. That's, it's much warmer. And if you just hypothetically say that uh, blue whiting would like warm uh, water that's warmer than say 9 degrees, then it can spawn in this region before 95, while this line of 9 degrees is much wider, both west and north. So it has a larger area where it can spawn.